Good morning and welcome. I know God will bless us today because we are here at the right place on the right first day of the week according to, uh, according to Acts 20 verse 7. Sometimes I can't remember scripture like I used to. But nevertheless, it's good to see you. If you are a first time guest, would you please be so kind to look in front of you in the pew. There is a connection card. If you'd be so kind to complete that connection card and drop it into the collection tray before you exit the building, this one would certainly appreciate it. If you are, you can also scan the barcode on this bulletin and you, we can get the updates as well for, your, for our records. If you're looking for a church home, I want to become a part of this congregation, please see one of the team members, one of our team members. If you need a special prayer request, put Christ on water baptism, or if you want any other needs, please let the congregation know as well. Yesterday was Veterans Day, and in honor of all our veterans, we want you all to stand. All our veterans stand. Please stand, all our veterans. Please stand. We want to honor you today in our services. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you so much for your service. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be where we are today. We certainly appreciate that. This morning, Garner's going to be reading a scripture. And Weston's not present, so we're going to skip this song. After Garner leads in our scripture, then Chris will come forth and begin our congregational songs. At this time, we certainly appreciate your presence and hope and pray you, we, we will see you again very, very soon. At this time, Garner will come forth and read our scripture, then we'll get into our services. Got it. Instead of the scripture, I will be reading Ephesians 6, 14 through 18. Stand there before having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as your shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace and all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit and all prayer and supplication to the end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love 
Jesus completely say, he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Before we go to our Father in prayer, pure in heart, O oh God. Would you please stand with me? Pure in heart, O oh God, help me to be. May pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we come here on this beautiful Sunday morning giving thanks and worshiping you. Once again, we're so thankful to be here. We know that time passes by so quickly and we like to take a moment this morning to thank you for this opportunity and to just appreciate the time that you give us here on this beautiful earth. Dear Lord, there are so many wonderful things that you've provided for us, but at the same time, we use this avenue of prayer to bring our concerns as well. Uh, it seems as, dear Lord, there are many in our congregation, brothers and sisters in Christ, who are dealing with some significant health concerns at this time. We ask that you bless them and comfort them as they go through various procedures. 
We're grateful, dear Lord, that you've given the doctors the wisdom and the technology to be able to heal them so that they can uh, enjoy life and to be the Christians and do the, do the goodwill that you want them to do here on earth. Dear Lord, we are <clears throat> also so uh, thankful that we this time of year we're reminded of that. And today where we have uh, the opportunity to have a, a fellowship meal following the service, we are glad that everybody can participate and so thankful for those who work so hard to make that happen. So thankful for all those that work hard to do the work here at this congregation. And uh, we pray that... Uh, they are fulfilled by doing your will. We ask, dear Lord, that the uh, visitors that are here find this uh, welcoming environment, and we pray that, um, that they are brought closer to you for, for being here. As we, uh, <clears throat> as we continue with the service this morning, dear Lord, we just want to appreciate how quickly time passes us by and help us to understand um, that our time here on earth is so limited and to not only enjoy it but to do your will while we are uh, in that process. Please be with us uh, for the rest of the service as your scripture is read and once again dear Lord before we end this prayer we don't want to forget about all the conflicts around the world and especially in the Middle East, and I'm sure many of us are concerned and wondering what we should do. We know, dear Lord, that just looking at the Bible and what Christ would do is really our only guidance. So as we think about that and pray for those around the world, uh, help, help the leadership uh, understand your wisdom and guidance. And again, being with us as we continue this service, and all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Well, again, good morning. Good morning. The bad news is you're going to get a double dose of me. And the good news is, is hopefully we all pray for a speedy recovery for Lee, Kelsey, and Luke. And I don't think Luke's infected yet. Let's pray that he doesn't. Well, there's Kelsey and Luke. Good. Let's pray for a speedy recovery for Lee. If you're not doing it now, I guarantee you by the end of this lesson, you will be. <laughs> because Lee's not here, we do not have any uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. <clears throat> but I would like for us to open our books. If you would, to Matthew chapter 8, I'll begin there. As Bob pointed out, Veterans Day was yesterday. This country takes the time to honor the men and women who serve in our armed forces. Those that defend the country and everything this country stands for. I wanted to, to look very quickly and some things that, that crossed my mind. And if you were in Bible class this morning, you can see my mind is skewed at times. But I want us to look about the impact of what the armed forces with soldiers, with individuals in the army, affect and see or are affected by the scripture and what the scripture affects them. So 
Veterans Day, thinking about our armed forces. Everybody said, if I told you or asked you, what's the, the motto for the Marine Corps? You would say, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. It's very interesting to me that later on, hopefully I'll show you that Paul is affected by those centurions that served around him from what Gunner read. But that even in our armed forces, their mottos, we can put a spiritual meaning on the physical aspects of it. So we should be Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Then Jesus say, if you're faithful unto death, I will give you what? A crown of life. The army's motto, this will defend. We too will defend the gospel. Paradoxical part of that is, is the gospel defends us. Romans 1.16, for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And every one of us has been added to the church, guess what? Had responded to that gospel. The Navy model. Semper fortuitous. Always courageous. Last year, the lads and leaders was what? Be strong and in good courage. Do not be afraid. We should always, as Christians, always be courageous. The Air Force, aim high, fly, fight, win. Is it Jesus that says we should set our sights above, not on the earthly things? Fly, fight, win reminds me of the great battle in Revelation chapter 20. The winged horses, the individuals, the wider on the white horses who? The word of God, Jesus Christ himself the sacrifice lamb, the one we just sang hallelujah to. Even the Coast Guard says, uh, Semper Petutua, always ready. Reminds you of the, the parable of the ten virgins. Those were their lamps. Jesus says what? Be ready. You never know the day. So this morning I wanted to look at, at Centurions mentioned in the book, or excuse me, in the New Testament, throughout the New Testament. It's kind of interesting to me, and it kind of influenced what I, what I taught and thought about in Bible class this morning. But if you're there in, in Matthew chapter 8, let me start reading in chapter 5, or verse 5, excuse me. Jesus' interaction with the centurion. And Matthew records, says, when he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at the table of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob into the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness in the place where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. How interesting it would be to be those Jews that surrounded Jesus when he said this about undoubtedly a Gentile centurion. He had greater faith than any of them. We too should be like the centurion that we have greater faith. Later on, Jesus will have another interaction, or excuse me, in the other two Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Mark and Luke, record the same instance. There's one later on I'll talk about it. We'll come back to Jesus and Centurion, but let's go forward to Paul. Let's go back to the book of Acts that we studied this morning. Acts chapter 10 talks about who? The first Gentile convert, Cornelius, who is what? A centurion of the Italian cohort. That's kind of interesting to me. That he was tied to Italy, to Rome, probably in and of itself, maybe. But in 10, chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 22, it says what? That God, that Cornelius was a man who feared God. He had a great fearfulness of the Lord. Not only should we have a great faith for God, a greater faith for God, we should have a great fearfulness just like Cornelius did. The example of being the first 
Gentile convert and the way he lived his life and being added to the church. So again, Paul is mentioned here. He's got other interactions with, with uh, centurions throughout the rest of the book. In Acts chapter 22, he's being scourged. And he stops the centurion and said, is it rightful for you to do this? I'm seeing that I'm a citizen of Rome. So we saw a citizen centurion that had a great deal of duty. Because he stopped it. He was like, no, this is not right. He understood what the Roman law said. We should too also be aware of our great duty to God. Later on, he's entrusted to another centurion who will eventually deliver him to Rome. And I want to look at that, that interaction between Paul and Acts chapter 28 and this centurion. Excuse me, in Acts chapter 27. It starts off that this centurion, at the very beginning of the chapter, is one out of the Augustan cohort named Julius. Acts chapter 27, verse 1. We go through and see all the things that, that, that happen in this perilous journey that ends badly. Paul tells them not to abandon ship. The soldiers that are underneath the centurion at one point are wanting to kill all the prisoners because the wind and weather has gotten so bad that they're going to have to abandon ship. And to keep from having any of their prisoners get away and swim and escape, they want to kill them. But listen to what it says here about the centurion. I'll start in verse 42 of Acts chapter 27. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who would swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest on planks and on pieces of the ship. And so it was that they were all brought safely to the land. Verse 43, wishing to save Paul. He had a great friendliness, this centurion. You see earlier on, if you read through Acts chapter 27, that he let Paul's friends come and back and forth. And another centurion did the same thing that allowed Paul's, that circled around him, his group, his entourage, to interact with him. And we should have a great friendliness as well. Why? To share the gospel of God. To show our greater faith. To show our greater fearfulness. To great our show our, what this centurion showed, fearlessness and the obstacles, trials, and tribulations of this world that he sided with God through Paul. And what we know happened in the very next chapter, which is in the end of the book of Acts. How did this affect Paul? Because he wrote several chapters, or excuse me, several books after these occurrences. Ephesians is one of them. It's known as the prison epistle. Because he's in chains, he's bound. He was bounded by uh, those individuals sending him to Rome. The centurion was in charge of him. But let us read what, what Gunnar read this morning. And I'll start back in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I cannot but help to think that Paul was influenced by these individuals. Ephesians 6, chapter, verse 10, he says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. The centurion's armor. We think about it. We have plays on it. We've got a, a set that, that hovers around here that individuals have worn during different vacation Bible schools. But we am, imagine that. Paul must be imagining those centurions that did these things for God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So let me say again, thankful to our veterans, but let me say the mottos, aim high, fight, fly, fight, win. Semper fidelis, always faithful. Semper perpetua, always ready. This will defend. Thank God for those men and women that serve in our country that allow us to come and worship God as the Bible tells us to. So very thankful. But again, it's not just the physical aspects. Paul says what? Against the cosmic powers. The spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We think of spirits as only as good, but they're spiritual evil forces against us. Paul, or excuse me, Peter says it himself. 
The devil goes about the world roaring like a lion, consuming who he can. That's why we need the whole armor of God. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness, no one comes to me except by the Father. No one comes to the Father except by me. We are his righteousness that he paid for on the cross. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The same thing that I said that we will defend, defends us. It is a gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Are y'all getting a a fiery darts hurled at you every day? Yes, you are. Yes, we are. Every single day. Until he returns again. Our Lord of God, that sacrificed lamb that slays the dragon. I'll finish out. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance. Making supplications for all the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth. Boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. None of us are in chains, thank God. We don't want to be in spiritual chains. We don't want to be in physical bonds. Let us be free in Christ. The last thing I want to look at is again an interaction between Jesus and the centurion. It's recorded in each of the three synoptic gospels. But if you go to Matthew chapter 27, I'll begin reading in verse 51 the death of Jesus. He's upon the cross. Matthew 27, 51, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe. And what did he say? Truly, this was the Son of God. Now, was he converted? Because there are some manuscripts that don't leave out the definitive article of E, and he may be saying, truly, this was a Son of God. Like a Roman emperor that we talked about this morning. They considered themselves sons of God. But after what he just witnessed, I don't know. I have my doubts. But that's not the question this morning. The question is, what do you think Jesus is? Who do you think Jesus is? Is he the son of God? Is he the only son of God? So yet again, we have another centurion who shows a great understanding. Jesus was different. We have a greater understanding because we know Jesus is the difference. Those Armed forces mottos. We should respect those that defend us. But we need to apply those things that they take physically to defend us and apply them to the spiritual aspects of our lives. I said it once, I'll say them again. Aim high. This will defend. Always faithful, always courageous, always ready. This morning, who is Jesus to you? If he's the son of God and you believe that and you've not been made part of the body, not been added to by baptism, now is the time to do it. If for any reason you need to come forward and have prayers of the church, I beg you to please come now while we stand, while we sing. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me, I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. I know anything but of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw 
bombard me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath a cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit I then obey his blessed command and gain the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath a cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Please be seated. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, number 745, where could I go? Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them, everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs man, Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life 
fear is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I give from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the We're about to partake of the Lord's Supper. If someone doesn't have one, if you would please raise your hand and someone will bring one to you. We're about to remember our Lord. Brethren, our faith hinges on that fact that he was raised from the dead. And if it wasn't done, then our faith is in vain. But we believe that he was raised from that grave. I go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one in bread and one in body. For we are partakers of the one bread. You know, when I go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, it says this, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. He will come again. And I think we can all agree, Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this fruit of the vine, which so fitting represents the love that our Lord had for each and every one of us. We are ever so thankful that he went to that cruel cross, obedient unto death, that we may yet live. In his name, amen. We are about to partake of the fruit of the vine. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this fruit of the vine, which will fitting represents Christ's shed blood upon Calvary's cross. We realize, Father, that he gave it freely. And we pray that each and every one of us will reflect back what he's done for us all. In his name, amen. Separate of the Lord's Supper is giving of our means. Each and every one of us, if I look out, all of us have been blessed. I see a bunch of people smiling. I've been blessed also. Not only that in material things, but spiritual blessings. You know, we're in Christ. Christ is our Savior. What kind of price can you put on that? You can't. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we're ever so thankful for all the blessings of life. And we're ever so thankful for the spiritual blessings. For our hope is in Christ. And Father, we realize that when this life is over, if we've tried our best to live the Christian life, we have a hope of heaven where we can be with you every single day. Father, we're all so thankful for all you've given us. Times we take things for granted, but we know where it came from. In his name, amen. There's a plate here in the front, and also there's one in the back. Thank you so much.
good. Again, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you for being here, worshiping with us this morning. I'll go through the announcements. So remember, I can tell you prayer requests that we mentioned this morning, and we mention in prayers continually. Very thankful for these individuals and our avenue, and like Ernie said, the ability to, to pray to our Father in heaven. There will be no Bible study tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, because of uh, I don't have anything ready. So, but no Bible study tonight at 5. There is a quarterly potluck immediately following services this morning. Please, everybody, please come down and, and enjoy fellowship and, and some food with each other. Everything should be ready here shortly if it's not already done so. Number 19, the, uh, next week will be a song and scripture service. 19 uh, in the afternoon instead of evening study as well or evening wor worship that night. We'll be serving a meal at the homeless shelter at 6 o'clock. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. We did this a few months ago. It's a, it's a great thing, a great great work in our community. And starting next week, or excuse me, this week on Wednesday, the Chosen for Youth and Teens will be shown Wednesday nights uh, at 6.30, and it's downstairs. Is that correct? Downstairs, Youth and Teens, the Chosen, beginning of season one, I believe. Excellent thing. Great place to start some conversations and, and to understand, again, like what I was trying to do this morning, showing the backstory and everything of, of the New Testament world. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Anything I've been remiss in making at this time? Okay, there's nothing further. If you'll please stand with the last song. <clears throat> I'm thine, O Lord. I'll announce this. Thank you all so much for singing out with me and being with me and, and listening to me. Um, Sing and preach. I started the, the service this morning with Love Lifted Me. The first time I sang that song in front of a group was after a sister in Christ had died, and I was trying to lift up the spirits of everybody in the chapel that morning. Love Lifted Me. I want to remind us of that. The song I led before the, the Lord's Supper, Where Could I Go, was also to remind us the Lord is our rock. Sing out with me. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Will you please pray with me? Our most gracious and loving God, we thank you for giving us another day to come together and worship you in your glory. Lord, our hearts are grateful for the multitude of blessings you give us daily. We thank you for the love and warmth and peace we feel in your presence. And we thank you for little reminders of your beauty, like the colorful leaves and the crest fresh air. Lord, as we come before you this morning, our hearts are burdened by so many things that are out of our control. Your word tells us not to worry, but yet we grow anxious trying to fix the things we can't. We bring our concerns to you, and we lay them down at the nail-pierced feet of Christ. Our sicknesses, our ailments, our addictions our worries, our sins. We lay them down before you, and we ask you to make us clean and holy, for you are holy. Lord, we are so fortunate to live in a nation 
where the founders gave us a First, first Amendment right to the free exercise of worship without fear of government persecution. We sometimes take this right for granted and forget that not all of your children have the ability to gather and praise and worship and pray to you publicly. Our prayers of strength and courage are with our brothers and sisters abroad that they will have the ability to follow your word and to make disciples of all nations. On this Veterans Day weekend, we are reminded that our freedoms come at a great cost, just as our freedom from sin came at the cost of your only blessed son. Finally, Lord, as we are about to partake in an abundance of wonderful food together, we ask that you will bless this meal and all who eat, that it will provide nourishment for our bodies in your service, and bless the hands that prepared it. Bless the fellowship and the conversations that ensue. Bless our time together and bless us in your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.